Hey guys, Argifantis here with another Prismatic game analysis. And today I bring you two similar games where my opponent goes for a uh, Scorchilla Rush into Tia Thernax. And in both of the games, I'm able to fend off the rush with a strong defensive unit and eventually stabilize and win the game. So in the first game, I actually opt to go for High Econ with the third engineer. There isn't too much going on in this set except for Scorchilla and Tia Thernax. Both Tatsu Nullifier and Plasma Fire are much better in high econ situations. If you rush them, they're pretty fragile and are easily defended. And in the case of Scorchilla, I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to defend with Shredder. Shredder costs the same as a wall for one more health and the option of attacking. The drawback is that it doesn't have prompt and it has frontline. Both of the drawbacks aren't that relevant in the case of Scorchilla. And of course my opponent goes for the early rush. So I go for the classic Scorchilla counter, which is to just get 4 engineers and a wall. This way, when my opponent attacks for 6 damage, I have exactly enough. And rather than going 3 drones here, I actually go for a conduit. And this is because I want to be able to threaten my own Scorchilla and Tia Thernex against my opponent, who doesn't have blue and will have a hard time defending it. Additionally, if my opponent does go for Tia Thernex, I'll be able to defend with force fields. And he actually does set himself up to get Tia Thernex next turn. I actually don't care that much, so I actually go for Animus. The Shredder here is of course preemptive, but the Animus here lets me threaten double Scorchilla on the following turn, which will be very hard for my opponent to defend. My opponent seeing this, of course, uh, does go for the Tia Thernex. But as we see here, I actually have enough defense just from the Shredder and Engineers I bought. This puts me in a comfortable position where I am able to kind of set up my defense for the following turns and get stuff like non-prompt Shredders. And I briefly consider getting Rhinos to do a bit of damage, but finally settle on just spamming Engineers because of the fact that his Scorchillas will be attacking on the turn following this one. And here I play around with the idea of getting a Tia Thernax. I would be able to do it, but I'm a little bit concerned that I would have a hard time defending the third Tia Thernax swing. So I kind of put off a little bit, and just go ahead and defend with a wall force field and Rhino. Some very basic units. So finally, after his Scorchillas have already swung, I actually do decide to go for a Tia Thernex. This is because my opponent will have a very difficult time defending. He only has access to Force Fields and Rhinos at this point, since he will not have enough time to get a Blast Forge. And also, I'm pretty confident that I'm able to defend both the Tia Thernex and the following Scorchilla Swing. My opponent opts to leave back the Tia Thernax for one turn, just to soak 3 damage, and that's pretty reasonable. He would have had to Force Field two more times if he didn't do this. And on this turn, he does attack with the Tia Thernax. And here, uh, his Scorchillas are actually going to swing. So I was looking at uh, attacking with the Tia Thernax, but I realized I would have to get a Force Field and leave two drones back. So I actually opt to just block with Tia Thernax here. Uh, this does mean I lose both of my walls, but once his Scorchillas swing, He's actually only threatening 4 damage, so I'm not actually very concerned about losing both of the walls, since I'll be able to replace them. And indeed, I'm able to block pretty easily just by buying the wall here, and of course I attack with the Tia Thernax. So in this position, uh, my opponent actually spent all of his drones on force fields to hold off the Tia Thernax, and uh, my Tia Thernax was successfully defended, but in this sort of situation where my opponent has no drones left to advance his defense or his attack, and in a situation where I'm still able to defend pretty easily, uh, you'll see that I'm just able to eventually widow my opponent down and fend off all of his Scorchilla swings. And once again, Shredder is showing its worth in the Scorchilla matchup. And I kind of just slowly spam Tarsiers until my opponent runs out of defense. At this point, it's pretty much impossible for my opponent to win. So that's game one. In the second game, the setup is actually very similar to the first game. 
Uh, the big difference, of course, is the defensive units. In this case, we have Polywall, which actually has the same gold efficiency as normal wall. However, is it's very tech efficient. For one Blast Forge, you can just buy a Polywall every turn. Aegis is kind of the exact opposite of that. It's very gold efficient. However, it's very expensive in terms of tech. I'm able to kind of take advantage of the fact that green is stockpiled by buying some early conduits, and the Aegis will play a major role in my defense later on in the game. So in this game, I'm actually player 2, which means I get the first conduit. But rather than going for the traditional Scorchilla rush by buying Animus, I decide to go Auric Impulse. And this is because I'm a little afraid my opponent will be able to just fend off my Scorchillas really easily with Aegises and Polywalls, and I'd be stuck with an inferior economy. So instead, the Auric Impulse lets me save my gold for a turn and commit to tech decisions one turn later. My opponent, on the other hand, just commits to the early Animus and a second conduit. This threatens an immediate Theothernax, which I will not be able to defend unless I get a Blast Forge. So it actually kind of forces me into getting a Blast Forge here. I also get an Animus, however, because if he doesn't go Theothernax, I need to be able to mount some sort of pressure to counter his Scorchillas. And as we see here, he does go for Scorchillas. I'm able to defend with just a wall and a force field, and I actually have enough gold to double Tarsier. Uh, this is very important in the Scorchilla games because Provided you're able to defend the Scorchillas every turn without having to force field too much, Tarsiers are actually way more damage efficient. Scorchillas average to 1 damage a turn because it attacks for 3 every 3 turns, so they're not very efficient units. However, their benefit is the massive amounts of burst damage, so if you're not able to defend the burst damage, uh, Scorchilla will overwhelm you. But in this case, with Aegis and Polywall in the set, Whereas normally I'd be struggling to put together a reasonable defense, I'm actually pretty comfortable just spamming Tarsiers on the off turns. Because on the turns I do need to get defense, I'm able to immediately get Aegises and Polymals. Uh, seeing this, of course, my opponent does go for the Tia Thernax. Uh, I actually made a pretty crucial miscalculation here by going for the fifth Tarsier. As we see, uh, just going Aegis Polywall Force Field is not enough to defend against his next damage. Uh, if I were to get two Engineers here instead of the fifth Tarsier, I would have been able to defend very effortlessly. Uh, this miscalculation actually makes the game much closer than it needed to be, and I'm forced to go for four Force Fields instead of the Aegis. And... Again, because of that miscalculation, now I don't have enough resources to go Aegis Polywall every single turn. So I get put in a pretty uncomfortable position where I'm forced to force field way more than I'd like to. And his Theothernax finally runs out, but his Scorchillas are actually synchronized to attack on the same turn. Uh, he opted to leave the Scorchilla back on the final swing of the Theothernax, because this way he can defend my 5 Tarsiers by soaking on the Scorchilla. And once again, I'm forced to triple force field. Now, in this position, it actually looks pretty bad for me. I have 5 Tarsiers to his 4 Scorchillas and 2 Tarsiers, so he has more attack than me, no matter how you look at it. And he actually has the same amount of drones. However, because the Scorchillas attack every three turns, I actually have plenty of leeway to buy other stuff on my off turns, whereas my opponent is forced to buy at Aegis every single turn to block those Tarsiers. And as we see here, I actually set up my defense with Arc Impulse to have exactly enough gold to go for double Aegis on the Scorchilla turn. And, uh... Actually, the Auric Impulse is a pretty vital part of my strategy. Without it, I would have only had 11 gold, but with it, I'm able to get two Aegises. So, seeing this, my opponent is actually able to somewhat take advantage of my defense, forcing me to absorb one by not attacking with the Scorchilla. And he once again goes Aegis every single turn. Because he only has five drones, he actually took an off turn to get an Auric Impulse, so that he would have 6 gold every turn in order to be able to afford Aegis. And the game kind of just goes on like this for quite a few turns. My opponent going Auric Impulse Aegis, 
and me just buying Aegis's on the turns I need them. But eventually, it becomes apparent that I'm able to defend my opponent's swings. And my opponent actually runs very low on Aegis's. So, because my opponent actually ran out of Aegis Supply, or came very close to it, eventually he is unable to defend. And this is kind of one of those situations that even though my opponent has more overall attack, because I'm attacking every single turn with the Tarsiers, the consistent pressure of my opponent actually means I'm able to pull off a win this game. Because my opponent was not ever able to buy walls, whereas I was absorbing for at least one or two on most turns, the fact that I had slightly less damage didn't matter that much. In both of these games, as we see, even though there are very strong burst units like Scorchilla and Tia Thernax, if there is sufficient defense in the set, you can actually fend off some very aggressive rushes and eventually win with either Tarsiers or a counter Tia Thernax of your own. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next week.